Hello? Is uh, Mudupi Mazibuko and Andile for Penrich and Geo Real ECT reform ready? Okay. Chair, uh, do you mind if I can just make an update around the afternoon program? There are a little bit of amendments uh, that uh, maybe I can announce to members. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Chair, the next candidate, Mazibuko, is not available due to technical glitches. Um, uh, the second one, uh, Mr. Abraham uh, Hari is here. And then the child line SA is also not here, but Nuran Ali is here. Um, the last, the first Who is two, uh, Nuran, Nurina from UCT. Yeah. She's here and I've just uh, forwarded the presentation to members during um, break. Saying, um, you are saying Mudupi is not here? Yes, they are not here, Chair. No, child line is not here. Child line is not here, Chair. Splendid mm -hmm. kids, if you turn over the 15th um, stakeholder, uh, Splendid kids, uh, she's not well. And then the, the one kids for Haven mm -hmm. and PC, she has withdrawn. Uh, she's quite happy with wait, it. Wait, uh, wait a bit, wait a bit, wait a bit, wait a bit. Okay. Uh, let me just, uh, let me get organized. Okay, Chair. Uh, you are saying, uh, you are saying Mudupi not here. They are not here, Chair. They, I think they emailed, went to a wrong email address. Um, you are saying the child line night. is not here. The child line as well, Chair. And you are saying who else is not here? Uh, Amanda Kritz, Kritz, Krizika, Spendit Kids. Amanda Spendit is Kids. Not Amanda is not here. Yes, Chair, she's, no, she's not well. And um, Kids for Haven, Chair. Kids for Haven, which one is that? Uh, number 16. Oh, and, and yes, Chair, she has she withdrawn. She withdrew. withdrew. Yeah, she withdrew, yes. She's quite happy with the submission presented. She was watching we the are, proceedings. We and are then the Petty Abraham. is here. Yes, Chair. We are remaining with Abraham, with Noreen. And Petty. With, and Petty is three. Yes, Chair. Are they all around? Yes, Chair. Oh, then we're done. Okay. Let's go straight to Abraham then. Mr. Hari? Yes. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I don't know if I can be seen or heard. Uh, good afternoon. Are you Abraham Hari? Yes, I'm Abraham Hari. Uh, Riyadu Merizanda Aji. Renad. I'm Ren. You only have 20 minutes. You have to go to Oma. Okay. Oma and that. Thank you so much. I greet everyone. And uh, Mr. Chairperson, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, indeed, my name is Marumo Abramhari, the founder and principal of Oradile ECT Center, chairperson of Deep Sleuth ECT Forum, and also founder and chairperson of Children First Network of ECT practitioners with representation from all over the country. Um, I would like to apologize as there was a glitch in communication between me and the organizers, the organizers of the meeting. Uh, the email went to a wrong place. I only got a message this morning that I'll be speaking. But I did try my best to prepare. So um, if my preparation is not uh, well at par, I did send my written submission about the Children Amendment Bill sometimes in November last year, and I appreciate the fact Have that I've been to form part Yes, uh, I've, 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 I've sent it along in November. When did you send it? In November. That's why I'm here now, because I sent You sent your presentation in November? I'm Let's not talking presentation. about the current presentation. I'm talking Where about... No, no. Oh, okay, hold on. I'm Where talking about... Where is the presentation? Um, 
They were the the his presentation is part of the 69 presentations that um um are being considered by the committee. So there is no specific one prepared for this meeting. Is the submission that we oh, summarized by you? Okay. Okay. Proceed, Harry. Proceed. Oh, yes, thank you. I was just saying I, I did send my written submission, which is part of those 69. Yes. I want to say it really feels good when ordinary people who are actively involved in the lives of children are also recognized by the government of the people by the people, whereby we are able as well to say something uh, in relation to children amendment speed. Yes, I understand. Um, children amendment bill came as an opportunity for us as ECD to address significant challenges in the ECD sector of which the challenges are not substantially addressed by the bill. And I understand that. Yes, I understand because those involved and the role players do not have full um, understanding of the challenges faced by the ECD practitioners on the ground. And attempts has not been made to try and understand the sector properly. However, I would like to thank you all, those who are involved for responding to the written submissions, which were made last year around November. Yes, you responded well, because here I am as an ordinary member of society and children activists speaking on behalf of other practitioners and children who cannot speak on their own. Um, I understand that uh, the speakers before me already illustrated the challenges that ECD sector is experiencing, and I'm not going to repeat what they've already said. I'll speak uh, other things that people have not listed. To you, our government, we love, I say, for over 25 years, you have not only been unfair to us as ECD or the children in South Africa, but you have been very much unfair to the ECD practitioners on the ground. These are the people who make sure that children are, take, are taken good care of. They are in safe environment daily. They are provided with nutritious meal and they get proper stimulation. But what kind of support are they getting from various government departments? Almost none. If you are telling me that the DSD is funding the ECD sectors with 17 rand per child per day, my question to you will be, how many of those are they getting those benefits? Um, uh, from that, my answer to you without mentioning numbers will be, it's only the few children from the better resourced centers who are benefiting because the, the criteria for registration to DSD is just beyond our people on the ground in the townships and in rural areas. Those people are, are at a position where they can not be able to register with DSD unless uh, the rules and regulations and the requirements are relaxed. Meaning a center need to have money in order to benefit from government money. In, order, in other words, what I'm trying to say is that the poor are not counted anywhere. I am saying that because the requirement for registration with DSD is just way beyond our abilities. And especially in rural areas and townships. It felt so bad when on, on several occasions, I will, I will tell some of the practitioners that they don't have to try to register because there's no way they can make it. And that's what I've been doing because I'm helping as many people as I can to, to end up meeting the requirements. But for most of them, it's just impossible based on the current act. My humble message to all government departments is, Please refrain from making decisions about children without the involvement of children. Of course, you cannot involve children, but we have representatives of the children on the ground, the people who spend every minute looking after children and providing for their needs. These are the people who masters the art of bringing themselves to the level of the children when they are in their classrooms or in their centers. And after that, they bring themselves back to being parents and adults And they, when they are outside their environment. They, ju they jump with children, they sleep with children, they feed children, they change their nappies, and they stimulate them accordingly. They prepare them for school, but these children are marginalized. They, we have a saying in Deep Sleuth, I am from Deep Sleuth, by the way, we have a saying in Deep Sleuth that you cannot decide about Deep Sleuth without the involvement of Deep Sleuth. Once you do that, 
your decisions are going to be wrong because you don't understand the people in deep sleep. So you cannot decide about the children without the involvement of the people who spend time with children every day and every minute. Of course, you cannot involve every member of the community who is working with children, but there are the so-called representatives. And here we are. I am glad today that I'm part of this. So I am challenging you all to consider hearing from other active members of the community in relation to any decision that you are taking about them. Yes, most of the ECD practitioners may not be educated enough to understand the big English words, but this is the government of the people and by the people. So the people in government understand the language of our people and they can be able to hear what our people say if they involve, involve them. In this case, we are talking about the children's amendment bill. And the bill is about children. And the main place you can find children is at ECD centers around the country. Like it or not, wherever you go, whether it be squatter camp, whether it be urban areas, there are children. And where there are children, there are ECD centers and they are taking care of those children. And they are trying their best. They may not, they may not have enough resources as you would like them to have, but the little they have, they put into practice. We like it or not, um, uh, South African government is government for the people. And we are so sad that it seems like children or ECD centers or ECD sector are not really acknowledged. Um, I want to say that um, there was a time when all these years, when I, when I speak in public, I will tell them that our government doesn't really consider us. They don't really recognize us. Yes, there are few centers that are, that are benefiting, but they are the centers that are based in well-placed. Those who have well-resourced, who are well-resourced, are the centers that are, because in order for you to qualify for registration, you need to have one, two, three, where it involves a lot of money and it involves a lot of knowledge, but there's no one on the ground to assist the people to get to a point. So I am saying centers that are benefiting from DSD are centers from people who got money. I say, if you have money, start a center, do everything as required, and very soon you'll be receiving some money. But the poor remain the same. And it's about time that we consider them in everything and know that this is government for the poor people and let us take care of them because ECD center ask them everywhere they feel like they are neglected and I'm very happy like I'm saying with this initiation because I know and I can see now that I am able to be heard and other people have already spoken and more people will be speaking and government I know they listen and something will come up after this. Um, yes, um, I'm about to complete uh, my, my presentation. Some people would often ask me why I'm still not registered. Like I said, I'm also a founder of ECD. I know people would be surprised, more especially uh, if you see me, I'm just a young guy, also operating ECD center, a crash, a daycare center, however way you may call it. And I'm very active doing my best to ensure that. And I'm not only working for my own center, I'm assisting many other practitioners to, 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 to do things professionally and to understand what they are doing and to stimulate children holistically. So what I'm saying is that um, uh, people ask me because my center in the area where we are in Deep Sleep, you'll find that is much, much better one. And you may even think that we are registered with TSD. So they ask me, why are you not registered? Because we think you've got everything that can qualify you to register and get the funding. This I was asked by a, a official from DSD last week when they visit. And my answer is simple. I am on the ground fighting for the people, speaking on their behalf. If I eat, if I get to, to get something, I might forget the battle that I'm on up until at least 50% of the ECD centers are recognized and are taken, taken good care of. And uh, the rules are relaxed to a point where they can be able to register. Then I don't see a reason why I should register. Right in Deep Sleep, only 10% of the centers are registered. They are registered, but according to DSD, they are not registered because they don't meet certain criteria. I, for one, for, to give example, my center, we are registered with City of Joburg, we are rest, registered with SARS, we are registered with Health Department, and, but on the other hand, we cannot register with DSD. 
we, ha we are not registered with DST. So according to DST, we are an illegal center, meaning over 90% of centers in Deep Sleuth are illegal because they are not registered, but they have NPO. They get that NPO from DST. So I am saying we need to relook really at all those things and consider these people and see how we are helping because children are there. They are South African children. They are in millions. Parents consider these centers and it's about government. It's about time that government consider and take consideration of these centers and see what they can help to assist and help people to reach the level of registration so that they can benefit something from our government. Because as a matter of fact, as our centers, we don't benefit from the government as ECD. For over 25 years in government, ECD has not yet benefited. Let us do our best to ensure that ECD benefits. Let us include these people. I think um, I want to appreciate organizations like the Bridge Foundation and Mandela Foundation because they have recognized us, the people on the ground, and they've been involving us to hear from us. And I believe it's through them that we are at this stage whereby we are able to speak and government listen. I hope and I believe and I pray that going forward, something's going to happen. ECD is going to be recognized. We are going to hear government leaders talking about ECD because as a matter of fact, most of them do not understand much about ECD. Some of people will even ask you, what is ECD? Because for them, they only know crutches. But we are no longer just crutches or a daycare centers because we don't only take care of children. We stimulate them. We develop them in all areas of the, we prepare them for school. We get the results from parents that my child is doing well at school because of how you prepare them. We know that we are doing that. And it's about time that what parents experience, government need to know that these centers that we put aside, that we forget about them, they are doing a lot of work and they are making work easy for teachers at school to find that teach children have been well prepared for the work ahead. So, I'm going to conclude by saying, during lockdown, when the depression was affecting ECD practitioners, the most, most of them were highly uh, depressed because there was nothing coming up. We had to close, no one thought about us. In fact, we were not told to close. Schools were told to close. We had to close because schools were, were closed, but no one said anything to us. So it was just a week or two weeks before we can get the, the monthly income. So we did not get anything because parents had no reason to pay. So for that part, most people were struggling and they were depressed. Some of them wanted to even stop doing the ECD thing. So I started a, a network uh, called Children First, whereby we started a WhatsApp group to include all the ECD practitioners all around the country. And within an hour, the group was full. And then as I speak now, we have uh, four WhatsApp groups whereby I give out motivation every single day to empower them, to give them information. And not only myself, other members of the group are doing that. And we have members from all over the country. We also have people uh, of different colors. That's what I like because we are a rainbow nation. So we are doing our best. I believe in the spirit with that say, and there's an English phrase that says shine in the corner where you are. It may be little, but it's growing big. We're showing what we can in the little corner where we are. And we are glad that today we are able to speak our leaders to say we are not only relaxing, we are doing anything in our part as, possible, as much as possible to make difference in children's lives, in other practitioners. And we say, listen to us, involve us, don't decide about us without us. May God bless everyone. Thank you. In the bright corner where you are, where you shine are. in the bright corner where you, you are. <laughs> Thank you, Nadegare. Leave a comment. Thank you. No, that was quite a touchy and an emotional presentation for a South African who's dedicated to his own people. Thank you, Nadekhari. Don't disappear. We're going to have a conversation with you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Ms. Ali Nurina. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson and um, members of the committee. You, especially when we can see you, we do, we do see you. Um, I think you can see me now, hopefully. 
Yeah, no, we do see you. We do see you. Okay, you. great, great. I'm going to be sharing my screen. Um, and hopefully, technology will be on our side today. Okay, great. Um, ca can you see that clearly? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Okay, great. Um, so, so thank you all. My name is Narina okay. Ali. I'm an admitted what attorney and currently a lecturer in the Department mm -hmm. of Public Law. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry, Ms. Ali. Lindy, where are you? I'm getting a thing. That is technical. We're talking about uh, Ms. Ali and Chairperson, you can unmute yourselves, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Who think this person is? <laughs> Proceed, Ms. Ali. <laughs> okay, excellent. So as I was saying, my, my name is Narina Ali. I'm your, an admitted your, attorney. Your picture has disappeared now. Um, can you not see my screen anymore? No, you have gone. But okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and share that again then. No screen, no video. We can see the uh, chairperson. I, I, can can see see the, I can see the I can see the presentation. The video is gone. It's fine. Okay. Proceed. As long as you can see my presentation, um, no. I don't, that's the most important thing. No, no, no. The public wants to see who they are speaking to. Yes. Okay. So no, hopefully everything is working. We can also see you now. Proceed. Great. Um, so, so I'm an admitted attorney and currently a lecturer in the Faculty of Law at the University of Cape Town. I also previously, previously served as the executive director of the Equal Education Law Center. And one of our areas of focus was early childhood care and education. I'm going to be focusing my presentation on ECD and intergovernmental coordination, which is a theme that actually underpins many of the challenges which the ECD sector has identified and which the committee has heard about today. And also, I know one of the members raised this point earlier, and so I'm hoping that we can really unpack the importance of intergovernmental coordination in ECD. So just to give you a roadmap, I'm going to start off by providing a big picture overview of the role and legal framework for intergovernmental coordination relevant to the ECD sector. Secondly, I will highlight some of the ways in which a lack of, if, lack of effective intergovernmental coordination is frustrating the realization of rights of children across the country. And third, I will make some recommendations on possible interventions that can help improve the system. So an important starting point is recognizing that the right to early childhood development has to be approached holistically with an essential package of ECD services comprising nutrition, health, opportunities for early learning, social services, and caregiver support. These are all interrelated components of early childhood development rights and need to be approached in a coordinated, holistic manner. However, the problem is, is that ECD is often not approached holistically. More than a decade ago, the United Nations Committee on the Rights of the Child issued a general comment on the implementation of child rights in early childhood and specifically recognized that ECD services have often been fragmented across several departments and at different levels of government and it has been piecemeal and uncoordinated. In response, the UN Committee on the Rights of the Child emphasized that in order to ensure that children's best interests are always the starting point for ECD service planning and provisioning, rights-based, coordinated, and multi-sectoral strategies need to be developed by state parties. So rights-based, coordinated, and multi-sectoral. And these strategies should be based around a systematic and integrated approach to law and policy development. So at the international level, there's a recognition of the need for states to ensure coordinated multi-sectoral approaches to ECD provisioning and regulation. Similarly, in South Africa, the government has indeed recognized that ECD services do not fall neatly into any one government department or sphere of government or sector. And what this means then is that intergovernmental coordination 
has to take place both politically, that is between different spheres of government being national, provincial, and local, as well as horizontally, that is between different government departments within each sphere. So for example, the Department of Social Development coordinating with the Department of Basic Education at the national or provincial level. What is important to recognize is that intergovernmental coordination is not merely a nice to have. It's a constitutional obligation. The constitution states that all spheres of government and all organs of state within each sphere must, must cooperate with one another in mutual trust and good faith by amongst others, assisting and supporting one another, informing and consulting with one another and coordinating their actions and legislation. So there is a constitutional framework within which intergovernmental coordination in respect of ECD provisioning must be understood. Oh, we have a here this tomorrow. And against which it must be assessed. Oh, oh, I have 16 presentations per day. Chairperson? Same pattern. Or is 16 until Thursday, until Friday? Excuse me, Chair. Yeah, my brother. Almost all the jobs, different topics on the focus. Honorable Chair. Is the real thing, let's see for now. Honorable Chair. Yes, Chair. Yeah, for now. Okay, all right. Hey, mute yourself. Hello? Mute yourself. My apology. Thank you. Sorry. How do I mess up my meeting? <laughs> Um, okay, so I'll pick proceed, up where it was. Proceed, proceed, then my apologies. Okay, I'll pick up where it was. So the important thing is that there's a constitutional framework within which we must locate intergovernmental coordination for ECD provisioning. Importantly, too, the 2015 National Integrated Early Childhood Development Policy also recognizes that ECD services require an integrated cross-sectoral approach with planning across different government departments. Now, in line with this recognition, the 2015 policy includes a framework for ECD intergovernmental coordination. According to the policy, ECD management and coordination should aim to further certain goals, including accountability, oversight, coordination, partnership, and autonomy. So the question we should consider is the extent to which these goals are indeed being met or not based on the current intergovernmental coordination mechanisms we have. And as I will suggest, in my view, we're falling woefully short of where we should be. The policy also sets out roles and responsibilities of different departments and spheres and highlights certain intergovernmental coordination sorry, mechanisms. Sorry, Noreen. Are you presenting one slide or shall I think my phone has jammed because I'm only seeing one slide with children. It doesn't change. I, I have moved slides, but I have also provided the presentation to the committee secretary. So perhaps oh, that can assist. I'm still on that slide with children and netball. I don't know whether it's I'm freezing or whatever. I, Maybe it's yeah, no time. I, I think that but might I, be a technical glitch on your end, but maybe maybe no, someone fine. can okay. tell me. Okay, proceed. Okay, that's fine. So, so we have the principles that are set by the ECD policy, and then we also have certain intergovernmental coordination mechanisms that are provided for in the policy. First, we have the interministerial committee for ECD, supported by an interdepartmental committee for ECD. There's also intergovernmental forums at national, provincial, and local levels. And these are established in terms of the Intergovernmental Relations Framework Act. And then the policy also includes the establishment of an intersectoral forum as a national platform for government and non-governmental stakeholders to engage on ECD services. So the sum summary here is that we have policy frameworks in place relating to intergovernmental coordination for ECD. However, despite this, there are still significant challenges and we need to grapple with how to address these. So what are these challenges? Challenges. Some challenges which reflect inadequate or ineffective intergovernmental coordination include firstly, 
those junctures in instructions and positions between the national and provincial spheres. An example of this type of disjuncture emerged in relation to the payment of ECD subsidies during the lockdown. The National Department of Social Development indicated that the subsidy should be paid, but some provinces withheld subsidies either entirely or in part, which was eventually challenged in court. So what we see is inconsistency between the national and provincial spheres, and that inconsistency having severe implications for ECD provider, providers. Significantly, I should note, the National Department of Social Development has actually requested the South African Law Reform Commission to review intergovernmental relation mechanisms applicable to the social development sector, particularly in respect of welfare services, owing to a lack of clarity around how decisions taken in intergovernmental forums, so that's the MINMAC, can actually be enforced. So the Department of Social Development has itself noted this as a challenge. A second challenge which emerges as a result of in inadequate or ineffective intergovernmental coordination is unclear and competing roles and responsibilities between government departments. So for example, between the Department of Social Development and the Department of Basic Education. This can result in mixed messaging as well as lacuna or gaps in re regulation. And this manifested particularly severely during the pandemic with chaos just reigning over when the ECD sector would reopen. Contradictory positions were adopted by the DBE and the DSD. It eventually went to court and the DSD indicated in court proceedings that the DBE did not have a mandate in respect of ECD. Other examples were offered earlier by Professor MJ, who noted how local government officials are often not clear on what their role is or, or are not adequately consulted. A third failure is failure to coordinate legislative and policy reform. And the very process that has transpired with the Children's Amendment Bill demonstrates this challenge as SALGA and DBE were apparently not adequately consulted before the proposed amendments regarding ECD were tabled. A fourth and final challenge, which I will set out in a little more detail in a moment, is fragmentation, overlap, and duplication in the ECD regulatory landscape. As the real reform campaign has highlighted, this type of regulatory incoherence poses a severe and even existential threat to the ECD sector, in turn frustrating the realization of the rights of millions of children. So I'm going to delve a little bit further into this fourth challenge. Now just quickly, I find this um, framing to be helpful. What does fragmentation mean? It refers to circumstances where multiple organs of state are involved in the same broad area of national need, and there are opportunities to improve service delivery. Overlap is when you have multiple organs of state with similar goals, activities, or strategies, or targeting similar beneficiaries. And duplication occurs when organs of state are engaged in the same activities in respect to the same beneficiaries. Arguably, the current ECD regulatory landscape is in various ways fragmented with areas of overlap and duplication. One example where there are significant areas of overlap and duplication is in relation to health and safety standards for ECD centers, which was covered really well by Tess Peacock from the Equality Collective. Simply again, there are multiple and sometimes inconsistent standards under the Children's Act, the National Health Act and the bylaws. And this overlap is administratively and financially burdensome for both ECD providers and, as Jana mentioned, also government regulators. Significantly, these are not theoretical issues. As the honorable members have heard today, these difficulties frustrate, and I would go so far as to say violate, the rights of millions of children across the country. And what this type of regulatory incoherence reflects, in part, is ineffective or inadequate intergovernmental coordination. And so we should pause to remind ourselves that intergovernmental coordination mm -hmm. and cooperative governance is a constitutional requirement, including coordination around legislation and actions by all spheres of government and all organs of state within each, each sphere. So finally, what can be done? Well, first, there's a pressing need, pressing an immediate need for a regulatory sweep or a cleanup. This process can and should be undertaken immediately 
and can be run parallel to legislative processes. A review of current regulation should consider whether there are possibilities for consolidation and streamlining. For example, streamlining the regulations mm -hmm. under the National Health Act and the Children's Act and clarifying roles and responsibilities of various um, government stakeholders. While regulatory intervention can be done, it may not be sufficient. So second, we need to use the migration and the legislative reform process as an opportunity to assess the effectiveness or challenges of current intergovernmental coordination mechanisms. What works, what doesn't work, and how do we change it? Importantly, legislation needs to clarify roles and responsibilities as the Quality Collective pointed out earlier. Significantly, we need transparency and engagement with sector stakeholders based on time-bound plans. And I support the suggestion earlier of having a champion lead this process so that it is always clear how, how it is going to proceed. Finally, Parliament has a role to play in promoting and ensuring effective intergovernmental coordination in respect of ECD. In this regard, holding regular joint portfolio committee meetings, bringing together relevant government stakeholders to monitor the migration and legislative reform processes can promote a holistic approach to the realization of children's rights to quality ECD services. And as was said earlier, I hope that honorable members after today will really be activists for ECD reform. And with that, I thank you. <laughs> Hey, Doreen, are you, are you recruiting us? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was lovely. Uh, I think the, the essence in your presentation, Doreen, is, uh, is regulatory coherence, optimal uh, use of resources. That coherence must find expression in intergovernmental relations intersectoral relations, and a number of other related matter you are for efficient governance of the whole of, of, of the whole of the whole exercise. Am I correct? Yes. That's your major concern. Of course yes. all of you are, are calling for a champion. Uh, I wish I could I wish I could be a champion or maybe the Social Development Portfolio Committee could be a champion. We'll see what happens about that. All of you are calling for a champion uh, for the Second Amendment Bill and strict timelines, holistic agent reform. Are you party to that? Yes, Ms. definitely. Ali, thank you very much. Uh, please don't disappear because the next presentation, after that presentation, we're going to have a conversation with you. Uh, Party Ribo, it's your turn. Okay. Am I with you? Miss Ribo. Are you there? Uh, unmuted. Have you? Oh, you were muted. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, but I can't see you. Oh dear. Maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> as well, you're seeing man. <laughs> okay. The whole country wants to see you. The whole so country wants. So when they meet you in the street of Job or Cape Town, they must say, "Please clarify what you are saying on TV." I don't know why I can't, I can't, you can't see me. I can see you. But I can't see you. Okay, let's speak of you. Anyway, you can proceed in the meantime. I seem to have a problem. Um, Are you sharing something with us? Are you got a presentation? I am going to share a presentation with you. Okay. Sorry, I'm just, okay. I can see the presentation now. Okay. C coming up. Coming up there.
Yes, there is a presentation. We're just pushing present, yeah? Yes, first steps, toolkit, and uh, overview. Those are your headings, am I right? Correct. Let's just see if we can mm -hmm. just... Okay. I think before I just launch into the presentation, I would um, just like to thank you, Mr. Chair, for the wonderful day. Seems I think I'm almost the last person. And to thank all the presenters, um, I'm going to do a shortcut because um, you said it all and repetition, although good, in this environment might put you to sleep. Um, I applaud you all for your passion and I feel... I feel passionate myself about everything that has been said today. And I must say, Mr. Abraham Ungari really touched my heart. Mm. We developed First Steps as a product after working on the ground and hearing for 10 years what our principals and ECD owners are struggling with every day. First Steps compliance solution delivered on a plate all the documents, the forms, the templates that are needed to run an ECD center. It helped with the legislation and guides, and guides that registration process, which is so difficult and so frustrating. So the words like constitution, mission statements, budgets, building plans, health and safety, signs, templates, registers, and all the other necessary documents, we took, completed all the policies and procedures and templates so that a school could take our toolkit open and actually present all the government departments and those legislative and regulatory people with the right documents. And we help in the toolkit, we help them with things like a constitution and a mission and budgets and finance and human resources. So we see it as a help as well as a self-training tool or a guide to all the elements in an ECD facility. We have been contacted by social development to do presentations and discuss the benefits of the toolkit, but they have not pitched for either of our appointments. We truly believe First Steps Compliance Solutions will help everybody be on the same page and work together towards some compliance and developing sustainable business for our ECD practitioners. One of the greatest elements in the ECD self-assessment tool that we have promoted are where I am and where I'm going. And I need somebody to hold my hand to tell me where I'm going, but I also need someone to hold my hand to show me where I'm at. Um, I will put up the presentation rather than repeat what has been said so eloquently and passionately by my colleagues. And I'm going to end with a little video that summarizes our very deep concerns and provides another simple solution to the challenges that we are facing. So here is my presentation. Um, basically, um, first steps overview is that um, we've, rather than bore you with how we got into being and our toolkit and what the documents are contained therein and why it is beneficial, we've actually put all these answers at the end of the presentation for you to hold and to review. Um, First Step supports the campaign proposal and the compliance solution. We support the five key. So we need a one-step registration process. First Steps agrees with that different ECD service providers should be regulated. Fundamentally, we agree with a one-step registration process for ECD centers to ensure the safety and the development of our children. We address this with the Compliance Solution Toolkit. DSD could also assist a one-step registration process and try and facilitate with the private sector the tools that are on demand that, and while they're inspecting these centers. And this way we can support and train and nurture and develop sustainable ECD business. 
All children attending any type of ECD program should have access to early learning subsidy if they need it. Absolutely, First Steps believes this because it develops the sector and the children have the opportunity to grow and develop out of that subsidy. Simpler, adequate health, safety and program standards should be put in place and must be accessed through one process. We need to provide a tool to simplify and support the process. We can't put people out who want to do a good thing, who want to give up their homes, to give up their environment and their lives and expect them to just stand alone. We need to give them the tools to actually support the process. A step-for-step -step process that is goal-orientated and that guides an ECD center towards measured standards and requirements is what we do. We develop First Steps Compliance Toolkit to help each and every person that wants to open an ECD center and face the onslaught of all the de government departments that make their life so difficult. And the last one, it must be made clear that you can get conditional registration. I think it's imperative that we have conditional registration and we have steps that move towards um, maybe a full registration process, but it is absolutely impossible to say to people, you cannot operate if you cannot register. The first is assessment chart enables self-assessment and enables a big percentage of the documentation and administration necessary for compliance and ultimately registration. It provides self-training. It holds the hand. It enables MECs to also recognize milestones for a conditional registration. So we're patting people on the back for what they are doing rather than what they're not doing. This could be applied and recognized at different stages on the first steps ECD assessment chart. The infrastructure needs of the sector must be supported. When people are giving up their homes and sharing their lives, I believe we need to support them rather than tell them what they're not doing. Infrastructure needs to be identified on the first step self-assessment chart. And it is easy to identify what is needed, no matter how big or how small it is, to find a solution. The self-assessment chart is an easy to use sheet and um, covers all the things that are required to run a business. So as an ECD practitioner and a principal, it's not just about looking after the children. It's not just about um, registering. It's actually about trying to create a sustainable business. And I think sustainable business is very important for the principals so that they feel that they are going somewhere and their little businesses are growing. So the compliance certificates, the human resources, templates, science, posters, finance, health and safety, learner administration, if I've got that in a package, I can move on with the business of looking after the children and working on the programs that are developing our children. Um, I'm not going to go into all the different, how to use the compliance assessment chart, but we just believe it is a very effective way of guiding our ECD practitioners to focus on areas of great importance in order to become registered and Again, it's holding the hand. I'd like to thank you for your time. And I don't know if this is the last presentation. Um, I do have a little video that we could watch. How many you, minutes? How many? Oh, it's two, oh, I think it's two minutes. Please. Okay, let's do that. I'm trying to get back now. Oh dear. Don't give us a technical glitch now. 
The longer you are not responsible for that. Are you not responsible? I think I'm responsible. <laughs> Exit full screen. Okay, we've got it. Give me a second. Okay, here we go. Where is your video, Betty? Sorry? Where is your video? Oh, are you, are you not seeing it? Nope. Oh, my goodness me. Okay. And I'm anyone, watching it what with I remember, you. is anyone seeing a video? No, I am not. Seeing we haven't. We only see your half only page. See it. We only I'll see face. your half page. And the screen but is shaking. <laughs> okay, I will send. I'll send it to you. I seem to no problem. Go through. No problem. It will. Still, it will be useful even if it is sent after this. Okay. Thank you very much, Betty. Thank, thank you. So we've got three honourable members. That was the last presentation of the day. Am I right, Linda? Yes, Chair. You are correct. That was the last presenter. Thank you. Where is Linda? Conversation with Mr. Harry, Ms. Uh, Ali, and Ms. Ribo. Honorable members, your hands. Oh, Mary, are you here? I'm here, Che. I'm here. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, you guys say, yo, 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 yo. Where have you been, all of you? Ah, ah, ah. Okay. Honorable Seiker, Honorable Alexander, Honorable Hang Stock, Honorable Masango, Honorable Bilankul, Honorable Mavana, in that too. Let's go. Thank you, Chair. Um, I firstly want to start and just say thank you to everyone who has uh, um, done their presentations today. Um, I think it is a call to all of us actually to become champions um, for children. And I really trust that our committee would take up that call. It is one that we must take. I don't think we have much of a, of a choice if we think of the future. My question is to, uh, to UCT. Um, I noted on the presentation, and I must say thank you for so eloquently stating what the problem, the problem statement that we are sitting with. Um, you mentioned failure to coordinate legislative um, and policy reform, fragmentation, overlap, and duplication in the ECD regulatory landscape. Um, certainly, it is, it is demonstrated in the processes that we're currently busy with. Um, in that the Children's Amendment Bill is uh, what we are dealing with in this committee. And then in the Department of Basic Education at the moment, the process of the Bella Bill is also unfolding. Um, so we have certainly opportunity here to address the very gaps that your presentation um, has, has highlighted. My question to you is, what are the opportunities present in the current migration 
of ECD from DSD and DBE um, with us dealing with the two bulls, the Bella bull that uh, obviously deals with um, the grade RR and grade R. And then in terms of legislatively reform, is there in your view an opportunity for the current legislative processes in both DBE and social development um, to deal with the inefficiencies in the legislative fr framework and the mission into the and the comment is just to you know I thank uh, Mr. Abram um is it um Kari? I give you a <laughs> um to say thank you to him for actually um being present here today and for us to actually see some male um ECD principles because as we know it's a, a sector predominantly dominated by females but it's just so important that you know children also see male role models and father figures in their lives from such a young age. So thank you to him and to Mr. Souls, if he's still on the line for being part of the ECD sector. And then just my administrative question to our committee secretary, can, um, we did start a bit earlier. So I just maybe missed it. Did Penn reach NGO and child lines of Africa just not show or did they submit apologies? Um, if we can just get clarity on that. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Honourable, who comes after you? What the, uh, sorry, uh, Honourable Stock and Honourable Masango. Uh, Honourable Chairperson, let me also join my other colleagues who spoke before me to appreciate uh, the good presentation and some criticism uh, from the different stakeholders. Uh, we really appreciate uh, the contribution from all of you. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, I just want to find out and get clarity on this issue. Some of the presenters that presented before us here, they raised challenges in regards to intergovernmental relations as far as the bill is concerned or issues of children uh, are actually concerned when it comes to ECD. So I want to find out, because we are in the process, and I think this issue has been partly raised by Sukas, uh, that we are in the process now of the uh, ECD migration. Uh, there is a process that is unfolding between the two departments. So I want to find out what is going to be the implication uh, with regard to what is currently unfolding between the two departments, and then some of the issues that have been raised by the stakeholders. Uh, that's my contribution, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. I'm done now. Are you done? I'm done, Honorable Chairperson. Thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr. Stock. Uh, Honorable Masangu. Thank you, Chair. I really do not have a question. The question I was going to ask was about even a comment about the integrated manner in which a government is legislated to work um, together across the spheres and, uh, and um, yeah, across the spheres of government. But the comment I want to make then, um, because I will hear the answer to that question or that comment is just to thank the, the, the presenters who made amazing presentations today and also how uh, wide ranging the presentations were in actually uncovering uh, the issues that uh, at, at, uh, from my side, I didn't, I wasn't aware actually um, were, 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 were taking place in the sector, but also to assist in us uh, comprehending the, the, the dynamics in the sector 
uh, so that when we go forward and do what we have to do, uh, we, we are aware of these issues. So it, it, mine is really to thank um, the, the presenters the, and you, Chair, for, for guiding the process, but also the, the whole program that has been to put together in such an informative and insightful way that has helped empowered me most definitely and um, look forward to the processes as they go on. Thank you so much, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rabbi Masamo. Cat Bilagolo, the Popo. Eh, how are you? How are you? Thank you very much, Chair. We're going to the Popo the coming days. You're welcome. You're welcome, Chair. Yes. I will take you to Chisanyam. All right. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, and I want to appreciate and commend every presenter who was presenting since in the morning. Chairperson, I don't know whether mine is a question or uh, or just a comment that needs no? it as as member maybe together with the I'm saying. It maybe it's a comment that needs us as a members of the Portfolio Committee of Social Development and members of the Portfolio Committee of uh, Education to look into it. Since this outcry of registration of uh, ECDs, like it has been mentioned also by Mr. Harry, if I'm not mistaken, it's Mr. Harry. Uh, the, the, I don't know, maybe when there are this call of, um, of proposals, if uh, the committee can be on the Side in order to do over ECD, the problems that are facing is since we're saying that most of on rural areas they lack that knowledge or skills, meaning they need to be to be skilled, and they, they were supposed to get assistance from the department, but it's like they're not getting it. So that is why I'm saying I don't know whether it's a question or it's a comment that needs us to look into it. Maybe let me say the social cluster to look into that one, since we, there there will be there will be this movement of. Is it this from social development to Department of Education? Maybe even the Department of Education needs to have the knowledge of what is happening. Uh, lastly, is um, about the overlap or the duplication of um, of this uh, or dip, or what the duplication or overlapping of these uh, rules of the provincial government and the national government. I think that one also need to be cleared as to this, as to which roles are to be done by the provincial uh, departments and which ones are to be done by the national uh, department. Thank you, Chef. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, after you is Honorable Mbana. Thank you, Chair. Chair, mm -hmm. I'm also impressed about the presentations. They are really empowering us. The question that I'm having, first, first steps talks about uh, subsidy. I'm checking whether are they emphasizing on the subsidy that the government is... Hello. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, okay, all right. Okay, I'm just checking about this subsidy that First Steps is talking about. In my understanding that there is a subsidy per child per month. So is it, is she emphasizing on, 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 on the same subsidy that we know? The last one, the inconsistency that um, I think it's Noreen, eh? yeah, Noreen. 
what does she mean when she talks about inconsistency? Thanks, Che. I think others have been covered by other honorable members. Thank you. Thank you very much. Otherwise, uh, hey, I'm a <laughs> I must say, uh, street. from the legislature, we've got Honorable Bosman. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, good afternoon, colleagues. Um, Chair, I'm not sure if this was covered um, because I had to step out just to attend to some constituent matters. Uh, but I wanted to find out if the committee is planning on engaging um, children themselves um, on their feedback on the amendment to the and also, um, are we getting any of the parent bodies and specifically governing body um, associations um, involved as well? And then I'd like to ask that the committee please um, engage with our colleagues in the NCOP to ensure that provinces have sufficient time to also, when we get this piece of legislation to conduct um, um, robust oversight uh, provincially because we would um, ideally, especially from the Western Cape side, I would like to take this outside of the Metro and make sure that we reach those rural communities that uh, don't often get consulted and don't always have the technology to enable them to participate in a meaningful way. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Honorable Bosman. Uh, the, if there are things that were directed to you, Ndadekhari, is your, your two to three minutes? Ndadekhari? Oh, thank you. Um, I don't know if there was any direct question to me. No, if there was no, you, you, don't, you don't think about it. Okay. Let, if yeah, there's no, not, let's go to... Norena? Okay. Yes, thank, thank the, you. Maybe, Norena? Norena? Yes. Not to, not to be rude to, to Mr. Hari, unless there's a parting shot you wanted to leave, Mr. Hari. Mr. Hari? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, Unless the reporting short you wanted to leave us with. No, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity. And I can see that all of what we said is not going down to the grave. So it's going to be considered. So it, thank you so it, much. It won't go down the drain. Sure. Unless we become the drain ourselves. <laughs> thank you, sir. <laughs> Marina, are you responding to something? Yes, thank you. Um, so there were some very important questions around um, the implications of different processes taking place with the DBE compared to the DSD. The one was around the Bella Bill currently being considered at the same time as the Children's Amendment Bill and what should we make of that? Well, I think the first important thing to say is that we must make sure that the legislation complements rather than conflicts each other. And the fact that there are amendments happening at the same time at least allow some opportunity to do that. It is complicated by the migration. And I think this is in fact a question that everybody has been asking the departments. What is the implication of the migration on current legislative processes? And I'm not sure that there's been a clear answer as yet. And so I would urge the committee to ask those questions and to make sure that there are joint committee meetings with DBE and DSD. So there's a more coherent um, and coordinated approach and we can get some clarity around that. But I will say that the migration does present in my view opportunities for imagining things differently, for being able to reform the system in meaningful ways. However, it should not be used to indefinitely delay the legislative reform process. And I, I am in support of those who have said that we must make sure that legislative reform, even if it's incremental for now, takes place urgently and coherently. And so I would strongly urge that there be clarity around which department is going to be leading which legislative reform process, and that the departments must provide us with clarity on how that's going to relate to the migration ultimately. Um, then there was a question from Honorable Mvana on inconsistency and what I meant by that. 
What I meant by that is that the different standards that exist under the Children's Act norms and standards and the National Health Act norms and standards, for example, they, they're not completely aligned. The National Health Act standards in some cases are higher than the norms and standards under the Children's Act. And then what makes matters even worse is that the bylaws that are then um, um, implemented are also not entirely consistent with each other. And so there's, there's a lot of work to be done on making sure that there's more consistency and more coherence. But that said, as I mentioned, there are easy opportunities. There's low hanging fruit as it were, because we can begin to engage with the regulations and how the regulations can be changed so that there is more coherence and, and uh, consolidation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for sharing your time with us today. Uh, Ms. Ribo? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, I think the question that um, was asked was about the subsidy. Um, um, I never suggested that um, it was even possible for a subsidy to be given um, to each school with regard to the business tools and that um, toolkits and things like that. Um, I do believe that if the schools can be registered, partially registered, um, and the government grants can go to the children, it helps the school. So that's what I was talking about in terms of subsidy. Are you done? I think does that <laughs> I'm done. Does that answer her question? No, 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 don't worry. She, she takes notes. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> uh, uh, can I say to our presenters today, uh, you shook us emotionally, intellectually, you stimulated us intellectually, you shook us emotionally, you actually woke us up on serious issues. I have no doubt in my mind. Uh, when I go through the economic, uh, the landscape of the economic experts, one of the philanthropists in the world called Ray Dalio uh, is one of the top 20 billionaires in the world who said he has done almost everything for himself. Now he's spending time to assist other people to walk the path that put him where he is. What he is worried about is the speed in equality in the world mm -hmm. is taking place, is deepening, and the kind of tensions and conflict it's going to create. And uh, he says one of the major interventions in correcting that one is education, infrastructure, and so on. Now, small countries like South Africa, for our independent education is number one, human, human resource development. And uh, all educationists, without any disagreement, they know how primary is the foundation of education. Other countries that are very successful in education are not worried about university. They are worried about the early education, the primary school. Uh, once those two levels are well grounded, everything else takes care of itself. So when we talk about the early education, especially uh, access to registration, uh, they have spoken about, uh, they have spoken about the holistic approach, one step registration, recognition of different types of, modal of modalities, simplification of dealing with the system. Noreen spoke about uh, integration institutionally, even on the application of resources. 
Uh, Professor, I don't have to refer to all of them. Otherwise, I'm very excited by all of you. Professor Mji said something very interesting that you can't talk about success, mm -hmm. successful foundation for children if you don't talk about the environment within that foundation is being constructed. The socioeconomic situation of the people in the, that constitute the environment within which they grow. The, the dependence on chemicals like alcohol and so on and all other human problems that impact negatively on the growth of children. The total environment, she says, it must be attended to. A lot of you guys, uh, your try your Hickman, and I can go on, Harry, in the national coordination, all, all what you guys are saying, please, it, be, it must be, let's look at this thing holistically. Let us, let us make sure that registration is rationalized, the recognition of different models, and let's simplify this thing. And then the major question all of you agree upon is that the second amendment bill is urgent. It needs a champion. It needs strict timelines. It must be holistic and urgent. You said we can't wait. Now, what challenge it puts on the Social Development Committee is that the issue of migration is one of the urgent things that we must play a role as a Social Development Committee because early child education is not mainly about migration. What is key? is what is it going to deliver once it, has, what it, once it has been integrated. It's taking a long time in migrating. It delays an environment of quality development of children. And dealing with these barriers, the, their registration, parallel approaches, and so on. So as this committee, we've got a huge responsibility. I'm very, very passionate about human development, honorable members. Our future, its stability, its calmness, its harmony. Uh, I can say a lot of other things that are psychological. Depends on a quality education and properly developed human beings. And it starts with the ECD. Having said all that, we meet tomorrow. And I want to thank all the presenters, the passion, and I also like those who, when realizing that their, their inputs had already been made, thought it's no longer necessary to come here and, and, and say the same thing that had been said. But I have also been advised that there are members of the public who are here attending, who are tempted to speak. Can I advise them that the, the pro this process from outside the portfolio committee, it only entertains arranged participation from outside the portfolio committee. It's only those who have, who, with whom we have arranged, and I would request that if people think that there are still things they can send, they, they should send them. We are committed to look as many presentations as possible because the higher the level of participation in developing legislations of this nature, the better. I again close by the words, second amendment bill, it's urgent, it needs a chamber. It needs strict timelines. It should be holistic, urgent. We thank you very much. Let's meet tomorrow. I'm out, you. Love you guys. Thank you, Chairperson. Mula? Uh, thank you. Chair. Hello? Uh, Can we go? Yes, Chair. Um, we are almost done. I'll address the question from Member Abrams. I'll respond to it directly. Okay, yes, bye bye. Chair. We close sure. now. Thank you. Sure, bye.
Bye, everyone. I'm ending the meeting for everyone. Thank you. Bye, Bye Lindy. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you, my dear.